we're trying to build that bridge between the world of learning and the world of work. And we're trying to do it in a very equitable and accessible way. Like in my mind, education currently operates as a fence, not a gate. I think historically companies have taken more than they've given in the recruitment process. And times are changing, like that doesn't work anymore. Welcome to another episode of The Path, a video cast and podcast series where we invite the founders of successful businesses to share their experiences and insights to inspire future entrepreneurs. In this episode, we meet Tom Brunskill, CEO and co-founder of Forage, an edtech company which, in my view, isn't about technology, but more about the human connection of early talent to the right employee. Welcome, Tom. Honoured to have you here. And before we kick off, I'm loving your journey. How did you take that leap from being a lawyer to an entrepreneur? Great question. I mean, for you always read about the stories of uh, founders uh, who became founders by design. They always knew they wanted to become entrepreneurs. I did not fall into that bucket. Um, quite honestly, uh, I went to you know uh, went to university. I studied law. Uh, I got to the end of my law degree and didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, I, I often joke about it. Unfortunately, it's true through a bad combination of watching too much Suits and Boston Legal. I decided to become an M&A lawyer and shock horror. That's not a great reason uh, to choose a particular career. I kind of was looking at uh, my own personal journey and like, how did I end up in this role that um, I wasn't good at? I wasn't particularly engaged with. And, you know, it's a problem I think most people have a human connection to, which is, how do you find that career which aligns with your skills and interests? Like we always talk about it, but there's not many solutions out there. What is Farage and what does it do and, and the impact it provides? Yeah, so what we do is we work with large global companies, typically not just large global companies, but they're the ones that we're typically working with to create free open access uh, online job simulations for college students, at least college students for, at the moment, to build career skills and confidence. And so we work with companies like BCG, Goldman Sachs, uh, Lululemon, uh, SAP, those types of large bra uh, big brands uh, to create these online simulations which replicate what it's like to work in a particular organization. So the whole idea behind what we're building is that we're trying to build that bridge between the world of learning and the world of work, and we're trying to do it in a very equitable and accessible way. This concept of equality of access, and, and, and why is that so important in how you've sort of built what you've built? Uh, I've been here in the US for four years, uh, but obviously started the company in Australia. And, uh, you know, what I observed in Australia was that, uh, you know, a particular type of person was afforded the opportunity to go off to university. And, and then from the employer's side was a tendency to hire people from particular universities or particular backgrounds. Um, but what I, when I came to the US, that problem was so much more acute. I think we popularized this myth that like education is like the great driver of social mobility. Like in my mind, education currently operates as a fence, not a gate. You're, you're doing work in the US, um, but you're also doing work in UK and Europe as well. You mind just kind of exp uh, expanding on that? Because I think there's a, there's a link there about, again, equality of access, isn't there? From the company's perspective, it's about how do I meaningfully invest in a broad and diverse audience and bring the right people into our organisations? Like that's not a US problem. That's not an Australia problem. That's a problem which transcends language, culture, uh, geography, that problem is acutely felt in like all four corners of the world. There's always this question about having to localize the, the product and make sure it reflects the nuances of each market. And to an extent that's true, but the fundamental problem that we're solving uh, transcends, um, you know, a lot of those factors. How about the universities? Are they embracing this approach that, that, you're, uh, that you've taken out to market? I think when I first started, I was quite cynical of the university experience. But what I found um, and great thing about building something is that closely held assumptions can be challenged and can be wrong, is that universities are a great ally to what we're building. Universities are trying to find a way to set their students up for career success. We're seeing universities be fierce allies uh, for what we're doing. We work with 400 universities um, around the world and that's growing every week. What you're now doing is giving 
I think you call it virtual internships, which is about giving students the best experience and the best understanding of their next step after university. Exactly. It's about how can I road test all these different opportunities before full, like fully jumping into one? How can I test those different opportunities on my own terms? We often say our um, programs are just as powerful in telling someone what they're not suited to. I want to touch on another thing, and I think you call it um, uh, early talent recruitment. How is that important with early talent recruitment, the Gen Z uh, students that are coming through, and then and then the importance of that for enterprises? We work with companies like all around the world. So we're seeing what's happening in South Africa. We're seeing what's happening in Hong Kong and Singapore. We're seeing what's happening in India, UK, US, whereas like typically uh, early talent recruitment professionals aren't they, they can see what's happening in their own little market, but they're not seeing what's happening in different parts of the world. And most vendors uh, that we kind of compete with will typically work in one specific region rather, across, rather than across different regions. I think historically companies have taken more than they've given in the recruitment process. And times are changing, like that doesn't work anymore. And you need to, like companies need to figure out how they can give more than they take. And in order to do that, you need to put um, Gen Z at the center of the experience. Employers are looking for how to ensure that they're getting the early talent. And Forage is all about, if I get this right, is accessing talent no matter where it is, right? Because you can do these courses regardless of where you are in the world. Exactly. The, 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 the motif that I often think about is what I'll say our product is like, an automated Hoover or vacuum cleaner, you know, like the little automated vacuum cleaners that go around the ground. Uh, the idea here is that, you know, companies set up these uh, programs, send it out, and it goes, collects incredible talent from like unexpected places and brings it back to that organization. Whereas historically what companies would do is they would say, okay, here are eight schools that are really great schools. We are going to send our team to those eight schools and we're only going to recruit from those eight schools. Whereas now what we're saying is use technology, use Forage as that kind of hoover of talent. To me, Forage is all about building the human side of innovation, right? And uh, connecting talent and with dreams and enthusiasm, and that's all great. So how do you find the right sort of investors that, that have the same dream and vision as you and passion as you? This is a valuable, this is a valuable opportunity. Like what we are building is a valuable business. It just happens that it's also got a mission that a lot of people resonate with. If you think about what we're building, like a lot of the companies that we work with see historically huge attrition within their organizations. They're seeing 50, 60, 70% attrition within the first three years of hiring the entry level hires. That is expensive. And what we're doing is we're closing that information asymmetry uh, between the candidate and the employer and enabling the employer to make smarter decisions about who they bring into their organization. Like we are building a valuable, a very valuable product that we truly believe is going to be a multi-billion dollar company. But it also happens to have uh, quite um, significant uh, social good uh, and impact at the same time. The two uh, we don't think are incongruent to one another. What do you expect out of investors, though, as you go along this journey? Are you expecting passive investors and you, or you know? How do you pick or the right investors as you build your business? Firstly, is who are the investors that hold the periscope into the future? Like, who are the ones who have seen it done before? Who are the ones that have had, you know, had to roll their sleeves up, um, have worked with companies or worked in companies uh, that have navigated the path that we're trying to, you know, we're trying to uh, navigate? How can we learn from them? The second thing we look at is, are they aligned with our mission? And not just through what they say, but what they do. Like who are the other companies that they've invested in in the past? Do they have a track record of investing in products which do, you know, do a lot of social good? So where to next with, with Forage? Is it, is it uh, just the tip of the iceberg or, you know, what's, what's your next step in, in, in the business? If we, if we go back to what, uh, why we're building what we're building, uh, what we're trying to do is democratize access to, uh, you know, the biggest and best employers in the world. Uh, and we're trying to close that information asymmetry between uh, the candidate and the employers. But it's not the only place that information asymmetry exists. It exists with parents returning to the workforce. 
military personnel transitioning into civilian life, um, you know, uh, high school students thinking about corporate apprenticeship programs, people who are being reskilled within organizations, in internal mobility uh, within uh, companies. So ultimately, uh, as an early stage company, we are focused uh, on the early talent space, but we are spatially aware enough to know that the product that we're building and the way that we're going about it is applicable to many other use cases. Tom, once again, thanks so much for sharing the journey and vision and for everyone else, I really hope you enjoyed the chat and please feel free to share and subscribe. See you in the next one.